Okay, Rong Hao Lang about Flexibend. Thanks for Chair's introduction. Hello everyone, I'm Rong Hao and we're from National Taiwan University and KO University. Today we're going to talk about Flexibend, which is a shape sensing street that enables interactivity of multi-part and deformable fabrications. By installing the Flexibend into a deformable fabrication, the user interactions can be sensed by tracking the shape of sensor. It also supports fabrications of multiple movable parts, such as widgets. Several previous work present techniques to enable interactivity of deformable and multi-part fabrications using mechanical, optical, and capacitive sensors. For these techniques, the hardest part for makers is actually installing the number of sensor in correct ways. Installing single sensor unit is way easier. Possible methods such as active sweat frequency sensing, passive auditory sensing, and time domain reflective metric sensing. However, they fail to capture higher dimensional deformations, says they can only track one operation at a time. Using single camera can track multiple movable parts such as surround. But the line of sight issues limits the physical design as well. For both reliable tracking and easy installation, our idea is using a single shape sensing strip for tracking. By stuffing the sensing strip to the firmable fabrication and a multi-part fabrication, the user interactions can be reliably tracked based on the sensing data. Therefore, we can turn deformable and multi-part fabrication into computer input devices. First of all, we attempt to uh, develop thin and flexible shape sensing strips for embedded uses in fabrications. A conventional solution, shape tape, turns out to be the possible candidate, but the resolution is not high enough. Therefore, we further explore other band sensors, including flex sense, flex, band micros. Finally, we found that strain gauge can be an interesting one to try because it is the smallest one. A strain gauge is a thin and small band sensor typically used for monitoring deformation in rigid structures. Deformation changes the electrical resistance of a strain gauge. To determine how deformation actually affects the resistance reading of strain gauge, we made six short flexible strips and each of which contains one strain gauge. Each one was fit to a set of plastic molds that describe semicircles of 13 different radiuses. The experimental results show that the sensor reading are linearly related to the bending angles. So we can move on uh, fabricating a strain gauge array as a shape sensor. We implement a 16-link strain gauge array and 3D printed the substrate using the flexible filament, Ninja Flex. The sensing data of all 16 strain gauges were collected by a main board consisting of a microcontroller, an ADC, and two multiplexes in a 45 frames per second refresh rate. Because it's, it is resistive based sensing, the power consumption is relatively low. For each frame, we capture the sensor data, subtract the background first, then measure the deformation by the offset data. We then obtain the curvature of sensor by mapping the sensor data to each sensor's response curve, which is obtained from the calibration process. Please read the paper for the detail. Based on the curvature of each sensor, we can construct the shape of flexi band. Now, we have a series of 16 curvatures. The first thing is to add the spaces 
between the curvatures, we already know the actual length of space when it is fabricated. Then we turn each curvature into several control points. For example, four points in this example. Finally, we can use nerves to connect the control points as a resulting shape. To evaluate the performance of shape reconstruction, we use the DI platform to capture the ground truth with the reconstructed shape. We tested 17 example shapes and the results showed that the mean position error of each joint is only seven millimeter. Although the error is accumulated at the end point, the error is still less than two, millimeter, two centimeter. And that is sufficiently accurate for our application. To fabricate deformable object for flexi band, we 3D print the substrate using Ninja Flex as well. A group is preserved on the model for installing the flexi band. By placing the flexi band into the group, the shape is captured at the same time. After that, the user interactions can be easily detected by resolving the difference. For storytelling, a user can change the expression of the virtual seahorse displayed on the screen by bending the physical seahorse puppetry and making it look confident and proud. Using common rigid filament such as PLA or ABS can also fabricate multi-part widgets such as buttons. A widget consists of an entrance, a cavity, and an exit for the flexi band. And a joint is used to keep the green part movable. However, it's not enough. Because the moving part affects the flexi band outside the widget, the challenge turns out to be how to isolate each widget. And that would make the remaining part of string gauge reusable for other widgets. Our solution is the locking mechanism. The landmarks on the entrance and the exit of the case lock the gear shape pattern on the each of the flexi band. The locking mechanism fixed and isolated the segment of flexi band that is loosely mounted within a widget. Because the flexi band is loosely mounted, the green part is still movable. Additionally, the 3D printed physical screen can recover the flexi band to its, to its original state. So that's how a button works. Know that the button is a pressure sensitive analog button. We also designed switch, which has no physical spring, but a lever-like structure instead. A knob with a rollable handle that deforms the flexi band can be used as a dial. With the same idea, we can make a slider as well. Our experiment results show that a three centimeter slider can reliably distinguish eight positions. And furthermore, it shows that the locking mechanism is effective because the strain gauge outside the widget were not affected at all. To wrap up, we show how to turn a toy pixel fabrication into an input device for a first person shooting game. The user installed a flexi band into a toy pistol which has a slider and a button. Then the user records the state of the input events such as a button and the slider's position. Note that the operations on different widgets can be performed at the same time. Then the user can select the weapon by moving the slider, confirm by clicking the button, and then fire and reload the bullets intuitively. By adding the motion sensor on the flexi band, it further supports 3D special operations such as welding the knife. Also, from the raw data's perspective, forming a flexi band into a spiral shape can sense 
subtle 3D operations such as twisting, stretching, and bending it. Although the 2D sensor does not know that is a spiral. Customizing a flexi band by making it longer and denser allows for higher resolution and simultaneous detection on more widgets or even sensing human body as sensor tape just did. Making flexi band using flexible uh, printed circuits also make a flexi band thinner and more durable because it can reduce the structure deficiency of fabrication. Our prototype made by Cooper Tape demonstrate the possibility. Conclusion, we present FlexiBand, a novel shape, shape away street that bring interactivity to multi-part and deformable object with ease because it is so easy to install and reusable. It can be a useful tool for iterative prototyping because a user can easily optimize the 3D model design with the same flexi band. Further future work can also consider to provide modularized 3D modeling uh, tools to accelerate the iteration of design and fabrication. And it is a great area to explore. So thank you for your attention. I'm glad to take all your questions. Thank you. So while we wait for someone else to think of a question, I want to, this is a one-dimensional input device. Have you thought about making it in yes. two dimensions as well? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, uh, current design support two-dimensional shape reconstruction. Uh, if you want to extend it to a more dimension, we can just uh, attach to a flexi band orthogonally, and therefore it can sense the deformation of a more dimension. Or uh, we can use the customized flexi band, which is commercially available, that can sense more dimensional uh, input at the same time using single sensor. So that can be the future work. Maybe just one, one other question. So you mentioned it's very low power, mm. but in many of your demos, you I see it's tethered. Mm. What um, have you experimented with a small, you know, Bluetooth LE module and a small battery? Like, what would be the barriers to actually get this to be completely wireless? Yeah, actually, we uh, keep the tether there because we are. We shoot the demo for a long time. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah, so we we need to keep the battery. But actually, the power consumption is low, so we, need, we can just use the low power BOE microcontroller and the battery for the future application, and that will be more useful in uh, daily life or daily application, I think. Thank you. Steve Fonda, Columbia University. So re really cool. Um, and you. you're showing adding this to something that's already been fabricated. And mm -hmm. I was wondering if you thought about ways in which you might be able to uh, build the FlexiBand into something as it was being fabricated. Uh, excuse me, build something. Build so since you're, you're fabricating something with 3D printing, yeah. right? And so it, maybe have you thought about how you might be, as you're doing the 3D printing, stopping at a certain place, laying in in prepared places pieces of flexible land, continuing to fabricate on top of that, yeah. right? And maybe being able to build something in which has flexible band in it in a way that was completely contained, mm. as opposed to requiring that you have a thing like the seahorse that you can stick it in from the outside and maybe mm glue it together or something, mm -hmm. but which are separate pieces. Uh, yeah. Um, to make the uh, flexible and further modularized or even mm -hmm. uh, embedded into the fabrication process, mm -hmm. and that's uh, feasible because actually the, the shrinkage is printable. It's mm -hmm. printable. So uh, just embedding the uh, printing uh, circuit process uh, mm -hmm. into the 3D printing process, uh, that would be an interesting way to embed in the sing single pieces without uh, further manual assembly, mm -hmm. or just to make it modularized as maybe like little bits so that can mm -hmm. be easily attachable or e easily detachable. Yeah, that's uh, both a uh, possible way uh, because this is actually a printed circuit technology mm -hmm. can achieve. Mm -hmm. Maybe ultimately making it 3D as opposed to just 2D versus 1D. Mm, yeah, the, uh, if, if we want to make it 3D, it, it's possibly need uh, uh, 
advanced design of the Fesipin, like uh, make the circuit. Uh, but make individual ones that are 1D like you have, but mm. uh, not just uh, orthogonal along a plane, but mm. in three dimensions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you can further discuss about that. Thank you.